Actors, actors love dying. I, I've died in many ways. Of course, I've killed a lot of people as well. You read the script, has he got a good death? Or, well, that's a really horrible death. My goodness, what happens there? Mm, you know. So I've suddenly walked into the supermarket in Sainsbury's and they said, have you had a marvellous day? I said, yes, that's Genghis Khan. I've just killed 10,000 people today. Good heavens, Mr. Blessed. Well, I would say that death is a taboo, but only a certain kind of death. Violent death seems to be absolutely fine. I took poison in a television series called the Cleopatras, and I was a Ptolemy of Egypt. We deal with murder on television every day. You know, it's the it's the 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 main source of stories. I've never been shot. Ooh, ah, ah. And people happily watch that. I tend to kind of have been villainous kings. I died in I Claudius, not on screen, but um, everyone died in I Claudius, I think, didn't they? And then you have something that deals with an illness, and then people are like, oh. I remember killing all these Germans for the great big attack, our tank attack. I, th I think that the Coronation Street storyline surprised people, but I think that when people heard what it was going to be, they were like, we don't watch Coronation Street for this. It hadn't been my decision um, to kill off Nigel Pargeter. And the storyline was that um, Nigel slipped and fell off the roof of Lower Loxley, which was the stately home that he owned. It was a huge shock, uh, I think, to the listeners. Um, yes, because he was young and vibrant and he was a good man. It was a slightly silly death, in a sense, really. I had a long scream. In a sense, half of me had died. The day came and Herbie Weiss says, well, you're going to die as Augustus sees in I, Claudius. And we've estimated, we're looking at the lines, that you have between four and a half to five minutes to be dead. I mean, once your eyes half open, I said, it can't be done. And it, I thought, this will never work out, because I could feel my body filling with saliva in my throat. <laughs> I thought that would happen. And of course, the eyes watered slightly, but then dead eyes do. And I, I don't know to this day how I did it. When I made the decision to leave Coronation Street after 16 wonderful years, well, it was 15 at that time, um, I knew straight away that the producers would want Haley to die, uh, purely because we'd built up this relationship between Roy and Haley over all that time. And the only thing that could ever separate them would be death. There was almost, well, it's what I've described before as an almost holy atmosphere on set that I've never known before and we did it in one take. It, it was almost like when I was watching it, it was like watching somebody else that I was mourning. And I, I don't know to this day how I did it, but it hit the headlines of the press. The shit hit the fan. Letters started coming in. A lot of the audience felt rather um, even more upset. I have had a lot of people talking to me about their own experiences of, of loss. Um, certainly, and their own experiences are dying, actually. And, um, and it has been amazing that people have needed to share those stories with me in quite a lot of detail sometimes. And as I say, that's a real privilege. I think it's very important that we learn to talk about death. It's a taboo, particularly in the West. For me, I think it's always better to talk about things and not talk about things. Not in a, a morose way, but um, a feeling of... Um and time's winged chariot, and you've got to enjoy yourself, because we all die. <laughs> um, some easily, some not so easily. I think in, in accepting death and embracing death in, in whatever way you can, as an, an inevitability, that you're living life more fully. And we've just got to make the most of it. And we never know when it's coming, and when it might come and grab us. So every day counts and you've got to love the people you love and do the best you can to you know, leave a mark on the world in the best way you can and then bow out gracefully when the time comes. I stood at the front, I'd run out of Russian. And did that, and all the Russian tanks moved forward, which they did. We used the Red Army tanks. Are you going yet? Oh, you're recording now? No, off you go. Oh, sorry.